Hello friends, welcome to our channel Mechanical Motivator. In this video, we are going to see a basic problem on hexagonal pyramid. Previously, I have uploaded many videos on Unit 3 projection of solid. If you haven't seen, means kindly go through all the videos so that you will be having a better understanding. And this problem, initially I will explain the question, then I will be explaining how to write a given data and then I will explain how to draw the diagram step by step. If you follow all the instructions, it will be very easy for you to solve this problem. First of all, understand the concept and then go with the problem. So what they are given here is a regular hexagonal pyramid. So first thing which should come to our mind is what kind of <coughs> diagram or solid which we are going to draw. So first of all, identify the solid. The solid here is regular hexagonal pyramid. The solid here is regular hexagonal pyramid. So hexagon we need to draw it. Okay. So having a base edge of 25 mm. So each side of the hexagon is 25 mm and axis length is 60 mm. So axis is 60 mm. Okay. Next thing is what they are saying is is lying on one of its slant edges on the ground. So what they are saying? So the hexagon, one of the slant edge is lying on the ground such that its axis is parallel to VP and draw its projection. So whenever they are saying axis is parallel to VP means the opposite of will be axis will be inclined to HP. So when axis inclined to HP, the base diagram will be drawing HP. So in this case also we are going to draw the base diagram. So hexagon we are going to draw only HP since they are given axis is parallel to VP. So opposite axis inclined to HP. If axis is inclined to HP, draw the base diagram in HP. Okay. So right now we, have, we found that where the hexagon is resting. The hexagon is resting on HP. Next is orientation. So there are if you want means you can draw two types of hexagon. One is this and second is this. Which type of hexagon we need to draw mean? We will be getting a confusion. So again going back to the question. So what they are given here is the slant edges. So their orientation will be edges. It's, this is corner. Okay. So they are asking to incline the slant edge. So we will be going with this type of hexagon. The second one we are going to draw. Okay. Like this only you need to identify and proceed with the problem. And uh, the first thing is draw the reference line and then go draw the base diagram. The first step is you need to draw a reference line. Draw the reference line this way. Write X, Y, V, P, H, P. The second step is we are going to draw the base diagram. So in our case the hexagonal pyramid means base diagram will be hexagon. I clearly uh, explained how which type of hexagon we need to take it up. So go with the second one that is this type of hexagon. Okay. Actually, I have done uh, one mistake here. Sorry for it. Sorry for the inconvenience. Previously, I just asked you to take the other hexagon, right? It's wrong. Okay. So, one second, I will explain. Clearly, listen. See, there are two types of hexagon we can take it off. So, what they are asking is, they are asking us to uh, is lying on one of its slant edges. So, slant edge they are uh, highlighting. Slant edge means this is only the true slant edge. See here. O, the this is the true slant edge okay whereas this one is not a true slant edge how we can identify this this slant edge should be parallel to the reference line so whichever slant edge is parallel to the reference line is only your true slant edge so this is the true slant edge and we have to go with this type of diagram not this type of diagram so extremely sorry for it and uh, kindly cut it off so we need to go with this type of diagram the reason is this is only a true slant edge the slant edge is resting on ground so we have to go with this type of diagram so just check which slant edge is parallel to x y line so this one this is only parallel to x y line so we will be going with this type of diagram diagram one okay not diagram two this is not we have to go with this so now it's very clear i think so so first step as i said we need to draw the reference line the next step is we are going to draw the hexagon so for drawing the hexagon you know very well draw the base the base is uh, 25 mm see the base is 25 mm so for 25 mm we draw a base and then uh, this angle will be 60 degree for hexagon 60 degree 60 degree so take 60 degree and uh, draw a line for 25 mm take a 60 degree and draw a line for 25 mm and then try to extend this line uh, vertically above vertically above take your compass measure uh, 25 mm Keep your compass here and cut an arc on this line. Keep your compass and cut an arc on this line so that you can form the hexagon. So drawing the hexagon, I think so all of you will be knowing because almost we are going to complete the third unit. So say follow the same procedure and complete the hexagon. Name it as A, B, C, D, E, F. You can also name it as P, Q, R, S or 1, 2, 3, whichever is convenient because they haven't mentioned anything. So you can go with anyone. Right now we have completed the top view of the diagram. The next step is 
project all the <coughs> top view points of course so that you can get the front view so pyramid means we know very well the front view will be a triangle if in case of prism means it will be a rectangle so see here this is called the center or axis of the hexagon so just join all the points how to make it is join a to d join e to b join f to e and uh, so that you can get the intersection point that point is called as o o a o b o c o d o e o f or call it slant edges and o d and o a is the true slant edge of hexagon so we should consider the true slant edge of hexagon so o d is the true slant edge of hexagon you know how to get this diagram uh, once you found the center means keep your scale on the point o so that you are in vertically so that your scale will be touching the reference axis from that point for a 60 mm draw the axis axis line should be long dash short dash long dash short dash so from the reference line for 60 mm you keep a point and as usual for same thing from from the point a you if you keep the scale means you will be getting a point from point f if you keep the scale means you will be getting b dash same way you have to get c dash and g dash point and later on we just join all the point connect all uh, connect the o dash with this point connect o dash with this point connect o dash with this point connect o dash with this point now i'll explain how to write the naming when you see from here see when you see from here you can see a so we have to a dash we can see b but you can't see f so b dash bracket f dash you can see c you can't see e so c dash bracket a dash you can see d you can't see d dash you can see d so you write D dash itself. So this is the triangle. This is the front view of the regular uh, hexagonal pyramid. And the dimensioning part we will uh, do later on. For your understanding, I just mark the sixty so that the axis height or axis length should be sixty. As of now, we have got the front view and top view. Next thing is we just going to keep the slant edge lying on the ground. The next step is what they are asking is they are asking us to tilt. That is one of the slant edges lying on the ground. So there are two slant edge. O dash D dash is slant edge as well as O dash A dash is also slant edge. You can keep any slant edge on the reference line, reference uh, axis. So I just kept the O dash D dash uh, slant edge on the reference axis. Measure O dash D dash. Just place as it is. Measure O dash D dash. Just place as it is and name it as O one dash and D one dash. Next, take your compass. Measure O dash to A dash. Okay. Measure O dash to A dash. From O dash, cut an arc. Measure D dash to A dash. Measure D dash to A dash. Measure with your compass from D dash cut an arc. So both the arcs will intersect on point, and that point is called as A one dash. Now we have formed the triangle. Next thing is just measure this distance from A dash to B dash. How much of a distance is there? The same distance you will be having here. How much of a distance from A dash to axis? The same distance you will be having from A dash to axis. Measure from D dash to C dash. How much of a distance is it? The same distance you'll be having. So now you have got one, two, three points. You got right. Just connect all the points with O one dash. Then name as it is. If B dash means B one dash. F dash means F one dash. Naming as usual you know very well. C C one dash. E E one dash. <coughs> name as it is. Now what have we what have we done? We have just uh, taken this triangle and just we are keeping the triangle in this way. So that's what we did. So when we project all the points vertically and all the points horizontally, we will be getting intersection point. Once we find found out the intersection point and hidden lines mean, then the problem is over. Now we have identified the intersection point C here. Draw vertical line from D C B A O. And horizontal line from E D C. So all these lines will intersect at one point, and we know it. We going to identify intersection point. See this D and this D will intersect here. This C and this C will intersect here. Same way we have to identify all intersection point or A B C D E F. And this O and this O will intersect at here. So we have identified the intersection point. Next thing is hidden. So identify which point is touching X Y line or lying on X Y line. So only these two points are lying on X Y line. So whichever is connecting to this. So when you see from here, okay, when you see from here, you can see the entire part. Okay, I'll just show. <coughs> When you see from here, you can see the entire part, but we can't see this one. So, what are the points connecting to O one dash? Just take it up. O one to D one. So, O one to D one is hidden, but the thing is, in between we are having O A. O A will be visible, so you have to leave that. O one to D one is hidden, but O A to A one is visible. So, from here to here, it's visible, and remaining portion only hidden. Then O one to C one. So, O one. To C one and O one to E one, so O one to E one. Only these are the inner lines. Inner lines are 
O1 to E1, O1 to C1 and O1 to e D1 but in between we are having O1 to E1 which is visible. So now just join all the visible edges so that you will be getting the solution. Now we are going to draw all the visible edges. See how I am joining. Join A1 to B1, B1 to C1, C1 to D1, D1 to E1, E1 to F1, F1 to A1. One process is over. Next thing is even this you need to join. O to A1. Yeah. Okay. Then O1 to A1. O1 to A1 is visible. O1 to A1, O1 to F1, O1 to B1. So only these are the visible line. Hidden O1 to E1 and O1 to C1. A1 to D1 alone hidden. Okay. Only this part is alone hidden. Remaining things now it's visible only. So I hope so this diagram and it's very clear. And coming back to dimensioning part, this is the extension line. You have to write in 2H pencil. Dimension line H pencil. Number and uh, arrow head HP pencil. Same thing here also. Follow the same thing for extension 2H. Dimension H. Number and arrow head HP. Write all if you are writing alphabets right like A dash P dash and uh, <coughs> A B C D and all. You should write with your HP pencil. And um, this is the solution. Try to rub the unwanted lines so that your diagram will be looking good. So these are all called the unwanted lines. You can rub the arrow head and all so that your diagram will be looking good. And height of the text is 10 mm. Projection of hexagonal pyramid. Height of the text 10 mm. Write in a capital letter legibly. And here all dimensions are in mm. Scale in one is one should be written in right bottom corner of your A3 sheet. And uh, height of the text for both the lines should be 5 mm. You have to put a border. So 20 mm from left. 10 mm. 10 mm. 10 mm for all the remaining sides and you have to use a pro circle for writing your question number so this is the way you need to present your diagram so that your diagram will be looking very good and you will be easily getting full 20 marks if you feel this video is useful means kindly share the video to all first year students so that they will be it will be very much helpful for them during their preparation we will be uploading all kind of videos in all topics for engineering graphics so during your exam preparation you can make use of it we also have other playlists too kindly check the other playlists for job opportunities or motivation or current affairs it will be very helpful for you do subscribe our channel and stay tuned to the channel we will be bringing all type of uh, engineering graphics videos to you and uh, stay tuned to the channel have a great day